Hello everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about an upcoming FPGA Game Boy Color, Neg Kong Rumble support on the PlayStation Core, DE10 Nano clone updates, Amiga Vision updates, and more. Also, check out my channel sponsor, Mr. Add-ons, a place where you can get all your Mr. needs. Things like full Mr. setups, accessories, IO boards, and more. Now let's get to the news. Todd from Retrofrog showed off some 3D designs for his next Mr. Case design. The case looks to be a compact design, but can still fit an IO board. There are ports for snack, HDMI, and USB. Physical buttons for power, reset, and OSD are also shown. At the moment, I do not see a port for VGA output. If you're worried about that, just know that you can still output analog video over HDMI. Also, when the 3D designs are released, you can modify them to include a VGA output port. Another post showed off pictures of what the case will currently look like when printed. The case design features a slot for USB-C power at the back and the front has what looks like an SD card slot. And Todd also posted another picture showing it running Doom with an MT32 Pi plugged in. This design reminds me a lot of the core graphics version of the PC Engine design. And that was also a really cool looking console. The creator of the Oculus Rift VR headset, Palmer Lucky, has developed a new FPGA based Game Boy Color. Called the Chromatic, it features compatibility with the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Chromatic cartridges. As far as I can tell, the Chromatic cartridges are just branding and will still work on original hardware. Because on the current Chromatic games being listed, you can see the platform listed as Chromatic and the compatibility showing Game Boy and Game Boy Color. The system will also have a 160 by 144 pixel sunlight readable backlit display, an undisclosed FPGA chip, magnesium alloy shell, USB video out, 24 hour battery life, and more. It's a good thing that it's using FPGA based emulation because if any incompatibilities are found, it should be possible to fix via software updates. It will also cost $200. The bundle with Tetris have the option to choose between six colors and buttons can have English or Japanese lettering. You can pre-order it online now and shipping is set for Christmas of this year. It will also be available at GameStop retail stores around the same time. There are also new games developed that are available for purchase. Some can be purchased now and others are coming soon. Prices range from $29.99 to $44.99. There looks to be a lot of care being put onto this device. Of note is an LCD panel that's pixel perfect to the original Game Boy Color. And from what I read, it looks like it will also be recreating the sub-pixel arrangement of the original screen. People like Voltar and John Linneman are showing some genuine interest in the screen technology. Hopefully, it can recreate that original Game Boy Color look. An authentic screen seems to be very important. Palmer Lucky says this about getting the authentic look of the original screen. Because Pixel Perfect is a misnomer at these resolutions, pixel art of the time took strong advantage of the fact that each pixel is made up of thinly sliced red, green, and blue subpixels surrounded by black. Treating each triad of slices plus black as a square pixel ruins that. Now this device looks to be targeted toward hardcore fans of the Game Boy Color because at the $200 price tag, it is competing with the analog pocket, which can run many more systems. Also, the FPGA-based Game Boy Color clone from Funny Play costs less than $150 fully built. There is some serious competition in the Game Boy Color space. It would be interesting to see how the chromatic screen and buttons compare to the other systems and the original Game Boy Color. If you own a Namco NegCon, then you will be happy to know that the PlayStation Core now supports Rumble when using a NegCon. The NegCon is a motion-based controller that allows players to twist it to perform actions on screen. It was mainly supported in racing games because of how natural the controller works with them. The Amiga Vision project has been updated. Updates include optional Mr. INI settings for 1440p displays, you should know that these will not use the 5 times PAL dynamic crop. Those are only active for 1080p and 4K displays. Changes were also made to make sure Sensible World of Soccer works properly. The Homebrew Castlevania AGA game is now using the latest update, which includes a music test, new character sprite, 
and other fixes. Turrican 3 supports the full set of CD32 buttons, making the game easier to play on a gamepad. Eight games that were running with the wrong settings are now fixed, and game configurations are current with WHD load as of June 5th, 2024. Amiga Vision is a project that makes it easier to load and run Amiga games. It works on the Mr. FPGA, Analog Pocket, and real hardware. Regarding the DE10 Nano clone, Taki Udon posted a quick update showing a fully built PCB board that just passed QA testing. Taki also tells us that the power header pins are in the top left corner. This will allow non-jank connectivity with add-on boards. Also, the four pins near the USB-A port on the right will allow better connectivity to the USB hub board. There are also some useful questions that were answered about the different devices in development. One question asked if the cartridge versions will allow for different adapters in order to be able to use cartridges from multiple systems. The response was that only single system consoles are planned for the cartridge versions. But if things go well, they will evaluate expanding out to more systems. I honestly prefer the single system route, but only if each system has a unique look that pays homage to the original. Taki also gave reassurances that they are not planning on developing I.O. boards as it would negatively impact existing developers and hardware distributors. Remember, they are working on multiple devices that will make use of the Mr. software. There is a DE10 Nano clone. There will be budget consoles that accept physical cartridges, a mainstream console. There is a flagship console that will go all out on connectivity. And there is also a handheld in development. And Taki updated us with some good news about the release date. Thanks to his co-founder had some really good negotiations, they've been able to secure an earlier delivery window for the FPGA used on the $99 Mr. FPGA board. It is said that if everything goes according to schedule, we should be looking at an end of June slash first week of July launch. It's pretty awesome that we will be able to get alternate DE10 nanos very soon. A good thing that Taki also mentioned had to do with how many people can order at a time. Taki said that for these smaller batches, he would like to do one per person. So this should allow as many people as possible to get one. And we got more news regarding the cartridge version of the console. Some Blender 3D renders of the back connections were shown, giving us a better look than the previous diagrams. It was mentioned that some of the video ports in the back were removed and will probably end up in a side panel if they aren't completely removed. The design is not final and there are some minor revisions planned after the holiday. After that, time will be spent to finish up the handheld design. Retro Castle has added four new colors to their Mr. FPGA kits. A range of features are offered, depending on your needs. There are dual RAM kits, kits that provide built-in composite MS video output, and more. Check out the Retro Castle website to see the entire lineup. The next game challenge on the Mr. FPGA Discord is Pokemon Pinball. Ruby and Sapphire for the Game Boy Advance. It's a dual scoreboard challenge for both tables in the game. The challenge is going on now and ends on June 20th. Submit your scores to the Game Challenge channel on the Mr. FPGA Discord. If you're curious about the quality of the analog output of Mr. Addon's newly released 24-bit analog I.O. Pro boards, Kuro on Twitter posted some really good results on his testing. He's saying that this is the first device he has seen that can output proper video levels for component video with a Mr. FPGA, and RGB is at reference quality. This is great news if you're planning on buying one of those boards. So that's it for this episode. I provide links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro-related content. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you next time.